kind of a long time. Uh, but we need to make sure that we have public access easements over those things so that the public can get to them and that nobody can go out there and just close them down for them. So the I don't trails know, just, yeah, I don't, I don't, trails and sidewalks. Okay. So if we do require sidewalks along their frontage, we need to make sure that there's public access easement yes. over time. Yes. Both, yes. Right. But whether it's in the right of way or not, whether we make them dedicate right of way, they'll dedicate right of way if they're building, if they have to put in a turn lane or something like that, they'll draw and dedicate that right of way so that the state does come in and maintain that. They it's, will maintain that. Historically, when someone's come in for a rezoning and the right of way on the road is, is not up to current standards, we typically require them to dedicate that right away that, as, a, as a condition of zoning. Yeah, out here in the county, it's usually to the center line of the road. Yeah. There's a lot of properties like that, that, but the state's been maintaining it, and so they just, they, they've assumed ownership of it. So by law, they, the owner, even though they have that property line out there, they can't go out there and close down the road. Anyway, that's the way it's set up, but if we already do that, boom, we're good. Because we just made to make sure that watch for trails and sidewalks and things like that. Make sure it's safe. Signing, oh. Article 6. Ensure limitations on digital signs are applied oh. equally regardless oh. of content. And yeah. we did that. Yeah, yeah. we did. We talked about that. Oh. <laughs> Somebody needs to call Chief, Chief Johnson and ask me about the dry hydrants. I don't even know where that came from. I don't either. I thought they looked out and regarded something. I think the discussion was when, you know, we're talking about uh, Polo Farms, you know, a lot of the ponds that were... Well, yeah, our pond doesn't, doesn't pump right now. Yeah, it doesn't pump oh, right gotcha. But I don't know why that we put a well, line on them. The uh, one out on Lake Lake Brandon and, and one in Scalesville, there was... Maybe with the intent was to maintain them, whoever, but I don't know, is that covered in your HOA? No, because it's, it's actually the... They are you can't get them the right to do it, they got uh, to maintain the pipe. Gotcha. That makes sense. Okay. So the so fact they don't want to do it, that's up to them. But we give them. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Where it came from. Oh, the digital Research waste protection. Let me say these have to be conservation. Yeah. 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 Supposed to be, it's supposed some to be open space. Fees have to be related and have to be used to something related yeah. to what it's planning. Right. 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 That's the limitation anyway. I don't do it the same time. They give us money to build a sidewalk, put in a sidewalk or something out there. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We might need to have that, that, the B and blue, that needs to be a legal looking at that yeah. and, and figuring it out. Yeah. Well, so much luck. Once we get through, get the, uh, the advice document back from the consultants, uh, Chris, and I guess Scott will have to decide which particles go for the review. Um, as I've thought about it and to discuss, um, I, I do not think that the, every page of this document needs legal review. I think we need to have a review. For those things where there might be legal implications, where maybe if we're imposing a standard that might be a violation of law, and that's clear to go, but I'm not aware, we don't know. So I think, Dick, like, um, we can determine um, what sections that we all you know, agree that need to review. So I think zoning probably would be legal review. Articles 4 and 6. Right. And maybe 5 too, because there's yeah, another tier of specific development standards. And then what's um, some of the language under the legal language, uh, procedures, protocols, things like that. Um, so 
the, the, the fee in lieu and also even our development agreement things. Yeah. We need to have them look at that. Yeah, or that, 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 that he or she might be. Yeah, yeah. That, that's something. And there are environmental there are like environmental environmental existing templates uh, yeah. for a development agreement. That's a, it's a large it's a large contract. And then you can imagine what goes through to develop one of those. And or new attorneys got lawyers make this thing. Um, that's not a new way to start a new relationship with new attorneys to make them read this document. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh. It's done through the list. We've got one we have to come back to. Um, and, and that's your uh, owner. And I have noted uh, maybe as many 10 things here. But I will go check and follow up on and see if I can get the card information. <coughs> We're trying to figure out what some of these what we're planning to do. What's your intent? What's that? Bring that back. Okay. Um, is there any other business? Concerning to the to the uh, to the residents of Summerfield, um, you obviously know the comprehensive plan much better than I ever will. Uh, at least at least right now, I can say that's the truth. Um, and, but I'm always interested to understand how increasing the density in the village overlay now by three x is consistent with what's in the comprehensive plan. The second thing that concerns me is in OSM. Uh, essentially anywhere there's 50 to 200 acres in this town, there could be some portion of commercial, which would put it in some very interesting places, which I don't believe is consistent with the comprehensive plan as I understand it either. And, and I, I think you're right. Those will be some things that will be of concern to the residents. They're of concern to me right now. But I do want to thank you for all the effort you put in. Um, <coughs> I'm hopeful that soon you won't be spending your Mondays at Town Hall. Uh, Teresa? Okay, just a couple of things. Um, actually, when y'all did talk about the town board before, I did speak up at that meeting because I live in this area and I was talking about how 73 took away a lot of the traffic right through the middle, right there at the fire department. And if you add this town core back in this village overlay, that now that you've got rid of a traffic problem, I think that's going to add the problem right back. And actually, I do sit on a non-conforming lot in town core, and it's RS20. And Ryan, you might have to help me out. Um, well, let me get to you in a minute. Clint. 2004-2005 was when they first talked about their first town core. Mm -hmm. It's in the minutes. Frank actually has maps at the house dating back to the 1880s. You're welcome to come by any time. I'll give you a copy. There's a copy up there in the town planning that I gave to Carrie back in uh, last year. I was in the early 1900s. So yeah, I got maps. And this is where Rod have to help me. This actually started back in the 1800s when they found Summerfield, and the lots were put off into 10-foot lots, which were done by chains. Now, I cannot links remember what they yeah. used before yeah. chains. Links and chains. Okay, yeah. links, okay. <clears throat> so they were done by chains, 10-foot lots, and that's how you got RS-10, RS-20, RS-30s, yeah. and that's how this town got started. But when that was when actually Summerfield Road was Highway 220. <coughs> and so once the new 220 come in town, it took a lot of the, you know, like this business out of town, because now they could travel to, to Greensboro, which was a cheaper price to get stuff. Um, also, they were RS-20 
twenties and and thirties because back then you didn't have to worry about septic and sewer. We yeah. used outhouses, yeah. which didn't require any space but a hole. Yeah. And of course, the water. A lot of them. Even I grew up. I you know I grew up in a outhouse and. I grew up, y'all know what I mean. Right. 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 And then the water actually come from the community well, which we all pipe. And that's how we got water and septic back in the 20s. So the area that I live in, actually a lot of those lots are non-conforming. Um, They're legal. Yes, they are legal. And <clears throat> am I happy living on an RS-20? No. I can tell you in a heartbeat, I'm not. Now, I'm tickled to death. Is that my three minutes? Yes, ma'am. I am tickled to death, though, because it, I did inherit it from my family and for over 100 years. So I'm going to stay there until I die. Thank you all. Any other questions? Comments? Priscilla? Thank you. Um, I was all going round and around um, trying to review this map. And, and one issue that I see is of a concern is in everything in the existing development ordinance and in the previous version that you guys were working with, uh, the verbiage has been removed um, regarding the, uh, the different town core. So you had the town core residential and the town core um, mixed use. So it was from Centerfield Road south but now you're showing the mixed use going all the way from the center field up to the intersection of 150. that's not correct well she's going and i think she still asked a question but i, I don't know if that's not correct we, we talked about this about 20 minutes earlier so. so i guess chris what you said is that this is showing on the existing master <coughs> map map a zoning map, on the master zoning map. Even though in all of the literature and in the past, it has always been the mixed use district is from Centerfield Road down. There's actually no mixed use except for right here in this historical district, so I don't know why we would go ahead and encourage that mixed use all the way down. And if the zoning board feels that it's more appropriate to have it from Centerfield Road south, I think that decision can be made here in the zoning board and the master map be changed. That's my number one question, well, or statement, I guess, however you want to proceed that. The second thing I'd like to say is, is the historical district, um, I'm not sure that the town core, I mean, the town hall is within the historical district. The, what about Pat Jinks' property and then also um, Miss Beeson's property that has the historical recognition? Is that in here? Because there's a portion of that that comes into this. Uh, village district. I thought it went that way a little bit. I, I don't know, but um, I do know there's different standards for establishing a historic district versus a historic property, and uh, the historic district that exists in Summerfield was developed around several uh, pieces of property and, and structures that were found to be significant in the design of the district, and uh, that is reflected on our zoning map. And it goes to Brisbane Road, it goes to Adams South to a point just north of Madeiras. Um, it goes north from here, maybe 150 yards, and it goes to the east from here, maybe about another 100 yards. And that's the extent of that district. Okay. Could that be totally removed out of here and a different designation label there? Uh, because as I see it now, um, the Dennings property and half of Sue Beeson's property uh, would be fall within this village district. We'll be in. I guess it's more of a comment. The intent originally, I believe, was to remove the historical structures and to save the charm. So this doesn't necessarily get that done.
But one thing that the board has always been instructed in the past, and I've not agreed with it, is that, if, that since the, this board does not control schools or the roads, we cannot take those into consideration when we make a decision. So hopefully, is that what we've been told before? Correct. And even though uh, we would like to do that, we haven't been, we haven't been able to do it. Maybe our new attorney will uh, say this. I, I can tell you the existing ones, maybe we can't swoop them and do anything, but any new schools, we can absolutely control their traffic. We, as the zoning board, can require traffic impact studies that make them show queuing analysis, make them show how they're going to load their traffic every day. Especially charter schools and everything. You're talking about, about school density, though, right? I'm, yeah, I'm talking about, I'm talking about existing. existing. Or, yeah, we can't do that. Or, or, or existing highways. That, yeah. that, I mean, I've, I've seen Pleasant Ridge Road yeah. coming into the summer field sometimes. It's backed up yeah, quite a ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we can't. Especially with schools like that. We can't control that. Unfortunately. We can control anything yet. Okay. Public comment still? Can I do a public comment? I know you. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just raised my hand. Don Nadell from 3406 Windswept Drive. <clears throat> just related to what you just said, it's kind of kind of unusual because um, you, you're able to, and I understand what you're saying, you're able to create a situation knowing what it's going to create and your hands are tied. In other words, well, we're, if we do density or we allow this or that, we know what's going to happen. We know that traffic is going to be like this. We know children will be here and there, but... We can't do anything about that until somebody gets ran over or whatever. And that really, that's the truth what it comes down to, but it's just unusual in how the, how the laws work, so to speak. You know, you have no control over that. I understand that. But um, it's just ironic in how a problem has to exist before it gets fixed, even when it's created. And you, all you can do is just keep your hands together and say, we just hope nothing happens. But that's, that's just my two cents. But you guys are doing a great job. And I know you're looking forward to getting done with this and, um, and me videoing a whole lot too. And you probably just love to say, I'll get that stupid camera out of here. But hey, it keeps everybody honest. But thank you. That's all. We're all honest. We can always agree with Roy's honest. Yeah, yeah, Any uh, further comments or questions? Business? Motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? It's uh, 7. 5 0. Seven.